So Hisumi and Zorak is the first ever ghost and normal type, and that alone makes this bad boy pretty damn good. It's got solid offenses with base 125 special attack and 110 speed, and its ability illusion lets it appear as the last Pokemon in your party until it takes direct damage. So the mind games are serious business. We can set up using Nasty Plot to boost special attack, and stab options like Hyper Voice along with Shadow Ball hit really hard. We've got Flamethrower for some solid coverage, and in general, Hisuian Zark is one of the most fun Pokemon to use right now. Look, the world needed a normal and ghost type, and Hisuian Zorark is amazing. But it doesn't seem like you see this thing around as much as you should, and so that is what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Vivian. Now, I have myself a Swampert, and as a lead, I imagine this thing probably just wants to go ahead and give me a nice little dance show to start off. I imagine you know, the only really thing these things do is go for quiver dances, and I do have a couple of different ways to stop that. Generally, a turn one setup, kind of not the move. As they go for that quiver dance, I'm like, this is fine, I'm just going to go ahead and lay these around you. Don't, don't mind me. Now, Swampert doesn't have the greatest of matchups here. However, I know that even with plus one or one Quiver Dance, I should be able to at least take an attack. And then I can go for a flip turn and then kind of assess the situation. However, they're actually going to go for a second Quiver Dance. And this little fella is dancing his wings off over here. That is going to make them faster than my entire team and actually hit pretty hard. Good thing is I can actually hit pretty hard with my own flip turn because this thing is made out of paper skin and glass bones. So I get it down over half. Mostly I just did that because I wanted to break a potential Focus Sash. And I have a couple options. First of all, I could go into the Zorark who is Focus Sashed, but then also I have a Magnezone who is basically guaranteed to be able to take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. Either of its stabs, either bug or flying, it can't do much to Magnezone. So they're actually gonna end up busting out the Terra. I'm thinking Terra Blast? Nope, they're actually going to go full bug. Looking actually it, like it fits with the freaking the, the bug antenna Terra hat. And that's going to boost up a nice little bug buzz. It is at plus two after a couple quiver dances. With that boost from the Terra, it is going to do a lot. However, I am able to take that. Magnezone does not give a damn. We're going to go ahead and fry that bad boy up like a damn bug zapper. And that is going to take care of the Vivian to start things off here. Now, I'm actually happy that they went for that Terra. Because now that means there's going to be no surprises for us in the back. So, they can now switch in on the empty battlefield on whatever they want versus the Magnezone, and they decide to go into the Excadrill. Kind of, uh, kind of a bad matchup for me, as of course this thing threatens me with the Earthquake. It also threatens with the ability to get rid of my Stealth Rock with the Rapid Spin. I could potentially go into the Zorark here as a Ghost type trying to spin block, except that kind of does reveal exactly what I am, and I decided the Earthquake is kind of their at least best bet and main thing that I'm worried about. So, I go into the uh, Galarian Zapdos here. Turns out they are going to Rapid Spin, which doesn't really matter. Mostly just because I know that with my Choice Scarf, I should at least be able to outspeed this thing still. And it definitely does not want to catch these bird hands to the face. So I go for that close combat here, except they're going to go ahead and switch that thing out. Again, I'm not super worried about the Stealth Rock being taken care of. Just because Swampert still is in the back, full health, has the ability to just set those back up later. And they do actually end up switching in the freaking Mrs. Hat over here. They're going to bring in the Miss Maggie. Of course, I punch right through, and that is no fun. So, here's the situation. I kind of imagine they're going to go for something like a nasty plot. A lot of the time, these are going to be either set up or they're going to be support. So, I want to see what it's going to do. I decide to switch into the Zorark here, who is taking the form of Swampert, because that's the thing in the last slot of the team. And as they go for a Will-O-Wisp, it actually Willow misses, which is fantastic, because them looking at Swampert in the face, they probably want to get that Will-O-Wisp off. As a physical attacking Swampert, a burn would be real nice, except... I am in fact faster, I reveal the nasty plot, and they're thinking to themselves, well shit, that is definitely not going to be a Swamp Pert. So, while I am taking the form of the Pert here, they do know that I'm Zorark at this point because of that nasty plot and the speed we showed them. Except they go for that Wisp, it does connect this time, and of course we don't give a damn about our physical attack, as we are going full nasty plot special attacker. So, I'm now just going to go for a second nasty plot. As I'm looking at it, if I get two up, Zorark can do a ton of... And honestly, potentially grab a kill to basically everything they've got. So I get two Nasty Plots up, as now they're actually going to switch into friggin' Elvis Bird. They got the Squawkabilly, and this is something you definitely don't see every day, so shout out to Dude for using Squawkabilly. I'm just going to decide to go for the Hyper Voice. I know that I'm faster unless that thing's like weirdly Scarf, uh, but it actually is going to be Flame Orb, so it's, it's going to be a Guts guy. So 
I go for the Hyper Voice, and they're gonna switch right back into the Ghost. The Stealth Rock being gone is kind of annoying, and not punishing these switches. But again, it's not that big of a deal, because as this thing comes in, and I, you know, can't Hyper Voice it, it cannot Shadow Ball me, because I'm, you know, a normal type, which is like the best benefit ever. I also know that I can outspeed, and with a couple of Nasty Plots, a Flamethrower is gonna give us a nice burnt and charred Ghost for a nice little barbecue dinner. So. That takes care of the Miss Maggie, which is great. That's a good switch in for them, and honestly kind of a big threat. But we take care of it with a nice little flamethrower, and we're feeling good. So, they are able to now try to punish us with a free switch. They are able to bring in the Incineroar here, and this thing is at full health and pretty bulky most of the time. So, here's the thing. I decide I can actually go for the Terra Normal. It's also kind of hilarious still being a Swampert, or at least looking like a Swampert. I go for the Terra Normal, because that's actually going to go ahead and boost up my Hyper Voice. And even if this thing is fully specially defensive, with the nasty plots I have, and the boost from this Terra Normal, a Hyper Voice is got to be the most, most piercing scream ever, because that is going to straight up kill the wrestling kitty. And that's actually extremely great. Incineroar is one of the most annoying things ever. And with that being gone, that opens up the game quite a bit for us. So down goes the Incineroar, and we're out here on a little tear, and we're looking pretty badass with our freaking diamond on our head. So. Here's where it gets interesting. They're going to go into the Prime Arena here, and I'm thinking easily this kills, right? Unless this thing's fully crazy. I go for that Hyper Voice. It lives with like 5 HP, and then is able to fire off a Sparkling Aria, which is going to knock me out. So, I was curious to how that thing lived that. It turns out I'm pretty sure that means this thing's like Assault Vest and Max HP and Specially Defensive. Like, that is insane to be able to live, and it's like got to be one of the only ways that this freaking... I, Insane. So it does stir up the game a bit here, gonna make our jobs a whole lot more difficult, um, but also more interesting. So I now get myself the initiative on the Switch, and I'm gonna bring in the friggin' Galarian Zapdos. And uh, we're looking extra pointy over here, and I'm just gonna go for the close combat. I figure, you know, they don't have the Miss Maggie to switch into. Nothing on their team likes a close combat, and they do actually have the priority there with that Aqua Jet. So gonna do a little bit to me, however, the punches are gonna knock out friggin' Mermaid Man. Evil, and that's gonna that's gonna be nice because Primarina really really hoed me there. Not gonna lie. So while the Roadrunner Zapdos here is actually in a pretty solid position, they can now switch into the Squawkabilly. So I'm looking at this thing, thinking, does a close combat kill? It's neutral. I feel like it probably should, and I honestly didn't. Here's the thing: I switch out because I didn't. <laughs> I forget that this thing has like base zero defense. It literally, there's no way it lives a close combat. But I decide to play it safe and go into the Swampert here, as it is going to Brave Bird. Take some recoil and then some burn, so then I'm like, yeah, now definitely it dies if you breathe in this thing's direction. All you gotta do is be faster than it. So it is gonna be able to take care of my Swampert because it is faster in a facade. You know, it definitely obliterates me. So shout out to this shout out to Billy over here. Except, you know, that's mostly fine. Because with what they have left, uh, once again, Zapdos is looking pretty safe. I also do have the Dug Trio to end up taking care of things. You know, like that Excadrill, but I'm gonna bring in the Kickin' Chicken once more and show him who the true freaking chicken is over here with my meaty ass feet. So, I go for that close combat. I am gonna be able to outspeed well, because I am Scarf, and that is gonna be a dead freaking Elvis bird. Squawkabilly gotta be like the weirdest and most nonsensical new Gen 9 mod. I should really start cooking with this thing some more. I've used it in the past a little bit, but it's something you just always forget about. I don't know. So, final mod is gonna be the Excadrill. Once again, I do not have the ability to Terra because of that uh, Vivian early, and all I gotta do is just give him the old knuckle sandwich, and that's gonna take care of the Axe Grill, and it's gonna be the end of the game. So, kind of just a fun, ridiculous match, as most of the time they are, and uh, that is gonna do it for game number one. So, you already know, we do have a nice little game number two lined up, because that's how we do it around here. If you've stuck around at this point in the match, and you're thinking, hey, this is nice, go ahead and hit that like button for me, because it helps out the channel. And, uh, I don't know, it makes me feel good when there's likes. The thumbs up button is stupid. But, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so this time my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the low kicks. Now this thing just, uh, it looks like pain to me. I know it's gonna hurt. If it wants to first impression, it does have to worry about me hitting back. So I imagine they probably just U-turn. And as I go for the Stealth Rock, that's what they're gonna do. Now the good news is, we can see, judging by that damage, that it's not gonna be choice banned. So that's actually pretty good info to know right from the start. So I'm going to set up that Stealth Rock as they're actually going to end up switching in Buddy with friggin' Cinder Blocks. Which seems like an unfair advantage. Why is Conkelder the only guy that gets to have weapons? Not, I guess, maybe not the only one, but it seems unfair. Regardless, 
I get up my rocks and then Homeboy is going to get burnt. Activate this Flame Orb. And now it's got Guts and this thing is going to be nuts with the Guts. So here's the thing. I imagine they probably go for a Drain Punch or something along the lines of that. So as I go for the flip turn, I know that I'm faster. At least most of the time these things are slow so that I can get a little bit of chip damage. And I decide to go right into the Zoroark here, just thinking that they're gonna go for that fighting move. I also, am, you know, I, I dodge mock punches and things like that. Turns out he's actually gonna go for the knockoff, which is not ideal. Luckily it does not knock off the old Focus Ash because that at least allows me to live. Now, I am chilling at 1 HP, and with my illusion gone, Zorark is going to be out here just raw-dogging the existence, and that is not super ideal, but we're going to see what we can make happen at this point, because Zorark is still, you know, kind of a threat. So, I'm just going to go for the Hyper Voice. I want to get as much chip as possible on this Conk, because that thing is definitely one of the hardest-hitting things that they've got. So, they're actually going to end up switching into the Low Kicks here. I don't know if they imagine I switch out, or they think this is going to be able to live, and then first impression my last HP. But I'm able to yell at him, and a crit actually is going to be able to take care of the low kicks there. So the Hyper Voice does its job after the Stealth Rock chip, and now they can go into whatever they like. So honestly, low kicks being gone really does help out your boy. So that feels pretty nice. And at this point on the empty switch, they're going to end up bringing in the Excadrill. So Excadrill, I'm thinking, wants to potentially like set up here, not expecting a Flamethrower. That's what I'm going to go for. I am faster. I roast him up. And he does actually just barely end up hanging on. However, they're just going to go ahead and set up that Stealth Rock. The Zorark is out here just literally hanging on by a damn thread and making the most of it with our crazy tentacles. Honestly, this thing kind of grosses me out. But I, uh, at this point, know that I can obviously just outspeed. Another Flamethrower is going to be able to take care of it. But as I'm looking at it, they do have one special defensive fella in, in the back in the form of the Slow King, who does come in on a Flamethrower nicely. So I decide to go for the Shadow Ball just knowing that uh, it kills the Excadrill. Anyway, and they actually do end up switching into the Slow King here, which is perfect. So that's going to do a big old chunk of damage to the fella, and that is pretty necessary because this thing being huge on the special side, I, I do have things like Tyranitar, but it would be nice to just get as much damage as possible. And I'm going to go for it again. I know that obviously I can just roll for some damage here and check it out. I actually do end up grabbing the kill. It is going to get a crit. Did it matter? I think it might have. It, it was pretty close depending on the roll. But regardless, Slow King going down is amazing, and we are just out here causing a ruckus with 1 HP and Zorark just being himself over here. No Photoshop necessary, baby. We're all natural. Now, they're going to go into Zapdos, who does take some Stealth Rock chip, which means it's not Heavy Duty Boots, which is nice. And I go for the Hyper Voice, which is going to do a big old chunk of damage, but then allows them to actually set up the light screen. So going to be some screens on the Zapdos, with the light screen, I'm considering going for the Terra Normal with the Hyper Voice just to be able to grab a kill, but then I realize it's probably my best interest is to try to get as much damage and then save that Terra in the back for later. So as I go for that next Hyper Voice, it does in fact live, and that allows it to go for the Roost. So Zapdos is going to come out on top here because with that light screen up, it can continue to go for Roost, but honestly, I'm relatively fine with that just because that means... We're basically wasting screen turns. And I've made a hole in the squad with the Zorax at this point. I'm going to try to just end this matchup with, you know, as much a, as much chip as I possibly can. And as now they do finish me off with the Volt Switch, I'm actually pretty fine with that. Just because that means that when they kill you with the pivot move, now I have to, I'm able to see what they want to switch into. And that allows me to decide a little matchup and put myself on the upper hand just a little bit. So they decide to go into the Excadrill. And uh, obviously the thing is still barely alive from that Flamethrower. But in that range, it's pretty much killable by just about anything here. So it is also going to get some leftovers back, but that's fine because I have a lot of different options you know, versus the Excadrill. I decide I'm actually going to end up going into the Swampert here. I'm thinking maybe they end up switching this thing out knowing that they can't knock me out. I also, if they want to Rapid Spin, I could potentially set them back up. I'm going to go for the Flip Turn just to see if they want to end up switching here, but they're actually just going to go ahead and spin around in a rapid fashion. And that is going to, you know, go ahead and uh, at least get rid of the Stealth Rock. They basically trade the Excadrill for the Stealth Rock being gone here. And while that is really nice for things like Chip on the Zapdos, I feel like it's not super necessary. So I go for that flip turn. I end up killing them now on the pivot, which is not the end of the world. It's kind of fine because I decide to go into the Magna Zone. And I'm trying to basically just bait the Conkeldor to come in here. If I'm them, you know, Mach Punch from Conkeldor is looking pretty juicy at this point and that's fine because i have the uh i have the little, the little terra in the back pocket so conkelda comes in cinder blocks looking sharpened and ready and i'm gonna go ahead and turn into a little flying fella i'm gonna put some balloons 
on the damn UFO, and the defense of Terra here is going to definitely allow me to take a mock punch pretty much all day long, because the base defense on this Magnazone, still, it, it, especially with the resisted hit, I can take mock punches just all day. So, I'm going to go for the Zap Cannon after they are going to hit me with a mock punch, doesn't do much, and I would love to actually miss a Zap Cannon here, getting my speed doubled from a Blunder Policy would actually be amazing for me in this late game. But instead it hits, and again, I'm convinced that when you have a blunder policy, you just never miss moves. It's honestly a freaking cheat code. But at this point, they now have two Pokemon left. They're gonna end up going into the Vile Plume. And the only, the best way for me to hit this thing is on the special side, obviously, but also I do have the Steel Beam, which does in fact take half of my own health, but it does do a huge chunk to that Zepta, or to the uh, Vile Plume, to the point where I'm not super afraid of this thing anyway. Also, Mandazone probably not going to set up in the long term, of course, because of that uh, Zapdos in the back, also, of note. But, uh, that's fine. I just decided at this point I'm going to go for the Flash Cannon. I think I actually meant to click Thunderbolt there, just because it does good damage to the Bile Plume. But also does way more to the Zapdos than a Flash Cannon would. And as they switch into the Zapdos, of course, this thing doesn't have to worry about the Stealth Rock. Friggin' Pointy Dorito Chicken is feeling pretty nice. Except it is below half at this point, and I also get the Spadef drop, which is pretty solid. Now the bad news is, the Leech Seed is actually going to take me out. I was pretty excited about being able to you know, finish that thing off with a T-Bolt. Especially after that special defense drop, but it's mostly fine. Because I got a couple of different secret weapons tucked in the old back pocket here. And uh, one of them is going to be the Tyranitar. So I'm working out with a full offensive Tyranitar here. It's going to be a Dragon Dance set, but it also has a nice little stab stone edge, which just does a ton. And I don't give a damn about how defensive your Zapdos is, especially with the amount of chip we have on here. All I got to do, connect on a nice little stone edge, which we actually do for once, which is amazing. Stone Mist turns into a stone edge, and that turns into a stone bird. Killing one bird with one stone is fine with me. So... Uh, we are eating some leftovers. Final Pokemon is going to be that uh, Vile Plume, who obviously doesn't have much health left. He's kind of just hanging on. And just here for the vibes for the most part. Basically, he's just out here bouncing around. He's like, I'm just happy to be involved. And honestly, I feel that, Mr. Vile Plume. Do got to take a bite out of you, though, and we're going to hallucinate like crazy. But that's going to be a dead Vile Plume, and that is going to be also the end of the game. So I thought that was just an interesting match, and uh, I had a lot of fun with that one as well, as, as freaking usual. And uh, while that is going to be the end of game number two, I do also, in fact, have one little bonus match for you guys, just because, why not? So this dude has quite the interesting team. I do, in fact, have myself a Zorak who's, and, you know, Zorak, you're good enough yourself, but you don't have to pretend to be anybody else. But we're going to anyway, and let's jump into it. All right, so my guy is going to go ahead and lead off with a nice little hacked Rhyperior. Got the, <laughs> the URL on the username, which I think is always hilarious, and I have a Swampert. Who finds myself in a nice little matchup here. I'm basically just going to set up my Stealth Rock as much as I want to lay down a flip turn. The rocks are going to be good in the long term. So they do end up switching this thing out. Now a lot of the time, if I'm seeing people with crazy hack nonsense, I just kind of bail. But I'm going to play it out and see how it goes anyway. Now, they do end up bringing in the friggin' Arch Nemesis Monkey, who is uh, obviously Swampert's least favorite friend. But I can get up that Stealth Rock here. And they're in a spot where, obviously, you know, I'm going to not have a good time with some grass. While I am Rindo Berry, I, I still don't really, it's not worth staying in here. So, I'm going to switch out the pert, save that boy for later. Going to be good for things like that Rhyperior. And I decide to go right into the Zapdos. I figure if they want, basically anything they go for here, I kind of take nicely. It turns out they are going to go for the knockoff and get a critical hit, which doesn't really matter, but it does get rid of my scarf. And uh, I can just kind of threaten this thing with the Brave Bird. I know that they're not going to stay in here though, so that actually gives me a nice little spot to put them on the back foot and go for a U-turn. Now they are obviously going to switch and I can decide and match up on whatever I want. It turns out they're going to go into the Milotic, who's more than likely just going to be kind of a defensive asshole, as most Milotics are going to be. So U-turn is going to do a nice little chunk, but then also is going to put me in a spot where now I'm feeling like Magnazone is in a pretty good spot, but also fake Magnazone feels like it's in a pretty good spot as well, because I decide to go into the Zorark instead, but I'm disguised as the Magnazone, which is always fun. And so here's the thing. Looking, as a Milotic looking at a Magnazone, you're probably going to want to get the hell out of there. There's not really much incentive to stay in here. So that's going to put me in a spot where I can get up a free Nasty Plot. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. But they actually decide to bust out the Protect. They want to scout what I'm going to go for, but that actually ends up working out very nicely in my favor as I go for that Nasty Plot. Now... Initially, as you go for a Nasty Plot as a Magnezone, it kind of reveals that I'm obviously not a Magnezone, and I am, in fact, 
you know, gonna be that Zorark, but it's still fine because I have my Focus Ash intact and I get up that plus two for free. So now we're in a spot where we're gonna be able to do a bunch of damage to a bunch of shit, and that feels always pretty solid. So I decided to go for the Stab Hyper Voice here as they're gonna actually end up switch and they're gonna go into the Rillaboom here and uh, Monkey pulls out his drum set, ready to play some drums, and then I'm like, hey, shut the hell up. I'm gonna go ahead and yell at you so you just stop playing your drums, and that is gonna take care of it. So plus two with that Stab Hyper Voice, not much wants to deal with this thing. And uh, we're in a pretty good spot here. Still looking like a Magnezone because, you know, we look cool. So, now they're gonna end up bringing in the Serral Edge. So Serral Edge is also in a spot where this thing can't go for a uh, ghost move. I decide to go for that Shadow Ball just because it ends up knocking that thing out. But they actually switch. They're like, you know what, never mind. I'm gonna actually not do that. And I'm gonna bring in Articuno instead who, hey, for whatever reason, they take Stealth Rock damage to like 50% and then a Shadow Ball just easily knocks that thing out. So as, I don't know what the hell the game plan was there, uh, but moral of the story, Magnezone just, I guess, fake Magnezone out here eating. So now to get back into the Serral Edge, I, I don't know what buddy is cooking here, but maybe he feels like now he's in a better spot. I go for the Shadow Ball here. We do know this thing is Heavy Duty Boots because it didn't take Stealth Rock, which means it's not Focus Sash, which means that thing is dead. And uh, yeah, that it takes care of it. Zorak didn't even need to reveal his true form in this match, I suppose, as in comes the... Uh, the big old thick sea serpent, and at this point they have half of their mons left, and Zorog kind of just eats them all. So as I go for the hyper voice here, they're actually just going to go ahead and run, because, uh, yeah, I just had to toss this one at the end, because, well, I don't know, why not? Sometimes you got to just body bag a fool with the Zorog, and that's the, the way she goes. So thank you guys very much for watching. Had a fantastic time with this one. Let me know if you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.